As Eddard Stark would have said, winter is coming. But before winter is autumn, and with it, falling leaves. I know many of you will be outside raking them into a big pile, perhaps jumping around in them, and finally bagging them up or dumping them in the woods. This introduction isn't headless. Don't leaf before you hear about leaves in your aquarium. Okay, bad puns aside, leaves can provide many beneficial effects to your aquarium. Let's start off with a brief look at the science. Leaves will release humic substances. These organic compounds will stain your water yellow or brown and work to lower the pH. In addition, they have antifungal and antibacterial properties and reduce heavy metal content in your aquarium. This is a similar effect to adding new driftwood. Many fish benefit greatly from this type of chemistry because it emulates their natural environment. Examples include Epistogramma, Discus, Angelfish, Geophagus, and other South American cichlids. The tea-stained water will help reduce the light, which may comfort some of the shire species. In addition, reduced lighting helps. Besides providing some healthy bonuses to your aquarium, leaves also help with fish spawning. The chemical effects of tannins can be used to induce spawning. The antifungal properties will help keep the eggs clean. Also, as the leaves are broken down by bacteria and fungus, a slime will form. Free-swimming fry, potentially difficult to feed with pellet or flakes, may feed on this slippery substance. This can also help feed infusoria, which in turn are a lovely meal for small fry. Which leaves can be used in the aquarium? I have experience using Indian almond, catapa, and oak leaves. Indian almond and catapa leaves are fairly easily ordered online. However, I live in the United States and the oak tree is fairly common. You can't beat free. When collecting leaves, only collect those that have browned and fallen. This way there will not be any organic compounds which can cause problems when decomposing in your aquarium. There are hundreds of oak species. Just don't pick from any that are poisonous. Prepare the leaves by first giving them a rinse off. Remove anything that may have hitched a ride. Follow up by drying them out. Once dry, they're ready for storage. To store them long term, just bag them up and keep them dry. That's it. When you're ready to add them to the aquarium, just do it. The leaves will likely float at first, but after 24 hours, they will stay submerged. Since they're affecting the water chemistry, it's best to add a little at first. You can always increase the effect later. There is no need to remove the leaves as they will completely decompose, but you're more than welcome to. Add more when the previous batch has been reduced. An alternative to adding the leaves to your aquarium is to make an oak tea. Simply boil the leaves in a pot and let the water cool. Strain out the leaves and you're all set with oak tea. Add to the aquarium to achieve your desired chemistry. In addition to leaves and driftwood, many aquarists use European elder cones to add tannins to the water and significantly lower the pH. If you're fortunate to live in the continent of Europe, you may be able to collect the cones yourself. There have been some introduction to the central and northeast United States and Canada, but otherwise you'll have to search online. Alder cones are much more powerful than leaves. It may be best to create a separate bucket of concentrated black water and add to your aquarium to get the desired effect. This information was primarily taken from Colin Dunlop's article. If you would like to read the full article, check out the links in the description below. You can follow me at facebook.com slash aquastudent. And before you leave, hit that like button and leave me a comment with your experiences. Tank on, amigos.